This podcast is for a mature audience and may be viewed as inappropriate or insensitive to some. Listener discretion is advised. The intention is to share conversation of like and unlike-minded individuals as they try to be the best them they can be in a life full of challenges, searching for love, acceptance, and positivity. Call 669-241-1422 and share yourself or catch up with Sweet Baby J for an anonymous face-to-face interview. Feel free to call in with questions, stories, thoughts, or anything you would love to talk about and share. Nothing is off the table when talking sweet with Sweet Baby J at 669-241-1422. Ladies and gents, gents and ladies, we are here talking sweet with this young stallion right here who's going to share a little information about prison life. Gosh damn it, something I never want to know about. Zero desires to entertain. Go ahead, hit me, my man. Hit. What was that like for you? Okay, check this out. This is, uh, all right, they know it's the same person you're talking to, right? All right, check it out. I suffer from a lot of mental disorders because of the lifestyle that I lived in the gang and watching people die and, you know, so on and so forth. And um, when I got locked up back when I, you know, got shot in the face with the taser and they literally beat the shit out of me, and and when I got to the jail, they wanted to um, segregate me because they thought that my tattoos would, would cause me issues if they put me in the wrong cell. The, the other race would take it the wrong way, and they wouldn't even give me a chance to explain. They would just deliver what they thought was justice. Wow. So they put me in what something that's worse than... Even ASEG. Wait, what's ASEG? ASEG is where you're 23 hours a day in your cell. You don't get no privileges, no no visits, no commissary, no le- letter writing. You do not exist. Not even letter writing? Nothing. Wow, okay. If it ain't to your attorney, you don't get to speak to nobody. Wow, okay. There's no windows in the room. You don't get an ounce of sunlight. Jeez. Okay, so that's just ASEG, okay? I went Stay to Stay out of jail. I went to the bottom floor, which is uh, worse than ASEG. It's called a psych- psychiatric protective custody. Oh. Now, the difference is there, you don't even get your clothes. You get to wear a mat uh, that's velcro. What you, when you say a mat, what do you mean? A quilted mat that's sewed into a form of uh, Velcro. And it's padded, and, it, and it's like a, basically like a dress. Then they just Velcro it across. It's like overalls, but instead of having pant legs, you got a skirt. Oh, shit. And you don't... Underwear? You, you get no, underwear? No, no, no. No underwear, no nothing. Wow. You go in the cell, you don't, you don't, get, you don't get a mattress to lay on. You got to lay on a slab. You got... Uh, in, humane is the... It's inhumane is not even the right word for it, okay? Now, these COs that were black COs, they also did not like my tattoos at all. And I told them the story that I was not racist. <laughs> that I not, that, they want to hear it. They, they that, thought that, you were just giving that, them a scheme yeah, to... Yeah, uh, that the pride on me, I showed them that I had the other seven sins on me. And that it was because I was. I had daughters, I had to learn how to swallow my pride. They were like, yeah, shut the fuck up, you racist ass cracker. Wow. You fucking say, so cracker, you honky ass, this, that. They, they, yeah. was, they was hitting you all with yeah. that, no, that they, so-called the reverse racism. Yeah, they were tormenting me with the reverse ignorance. And, uh, ignorance, I and like. you know what? And uh, you know the one CO, you know, I, I literally rewind a little bit. They were supposed to give me when I came into the jail. I pissed dirty for over eleven drugs. When you say pissed dirty, what does that mean? They drug test you when you come into the jail to see whether or not that you are going to be detoxing and whether or not you would need uh, medical assistance in that come down process. Okay. Uh, when they, that's when I was being on intake and I was supposed to go to a regular cell. Once they realized I was going to psychiatric protective custody, they put me on something. I found this out later. That they put me on something called Thorazine. Thorazine Which, is? Thorazine is a tranquilizer for a horse, I believe. It's, for a, it's, it's a tranquilizer for a very, very heavy animal. <laughs> you a big boy. Yeah, but at that time I was 330 pounds. Damn. And right now I'm about buck 95, so... You know, they and I used to Muay Thai box, so a lot of times in there to, to calm me, my, you know, get my mind, you know, occupied. I used to Muay Thai shadow box in my room. I used to hear the CO saying, "Go ahead and pop the door, that cracker, tear your ass up." Oh. And they used to make jokes about it. Now you pop the door, no, you pop the door, right? So you know, on a jail cell door, there's a little bit of play, just a little bit of shake in between it. I didn't and the CO used to come and he used to press his fucking nose 
up up against my door talking about come to the door so i asked so crocker come to the door and i would never move you know i'd be like i ain't gonna fuck you know, what can i do yeah. So he pressed his nose on there and he torment me every fucking night. So the, the next night that he came on shift, I pressed my nose against the door and just like he did, just to get him to come to the door because I realized that there was a little play in it. Mm-hmm. So when he came to the door that night and pressed his nose against the door, really quickly I turned around and buck kicked that door like a fucking donkey and I broke his fucking nose through the door. More charges. So let yeah, him char- <laughs> get it. More charges. <laughs> More charges. More charges. <laughs> so the, the other CEOs was laughing at his ass. So guess what they did to me? Complete. They fucking shackled me. They sent a cert team in. They beat the fuck out of me after I was already handcuffed. And then they put me in the next worst place that you could go. It's called the butt naked cell. It's full. The whole so, room. Sort of ex- self-explanatory. Yes. The whole room is padded. Okay. Now, mind you, the whole the floor of the room is on an incline. Like, just imagine a toilet bowl, right? Uh huh. Uh, it goes down. The middle of the floor has got a drain in it. And, and so there's no toilet. There's no toilet. Now, mind you, they tell you how am I used to rush? You know, they tell me, this shit on the floor. So I shit on the floor. Guess what happened? Rolls the whole down. fucking room flushes like a toilet from the sides. The whole floor. The whole fucking side. Every wall on the room. Has water shoot out of it to flush your shit with you in it down the to- down the drain. What? You gotta watch your shit. They flush you butt naked so, so in the room do, with your shit. Is there at least a time of day that this happens so you don't know not I to be on the floor? I was in there for fucking three and four days at a time in pitch black darkness. They pass your food in a styrofoam fucking plate through the hole and they make you eat it with your hands and fingers. Slop. Do you get t- toilet tissue? So you don't get no. Yeah, you get toilet tissue, wow. but 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 you know what? And then they march you to get three shower. You get one shower every three weeks. One shower every three weeks. Come on, man. It's fucking inhumane. Nobody want to listen to me. I'm just a criminal. So you know. You, so that's they, that's how they treated me. So this is how what jail is like. That's you exactly know. what jail is like. Guess what happens? And when you piss them off, guess what happens? The, the whole psychiatric PC is oh, is an open mod. All this, all the people in the cells can see what's happening in the mod. Mm. Okay, they have a board inside the room that has straps on it for your arms and legs. Yeah, they strap you to it butt naked, and they spray you with the fucking fire hose in front of everybody. In front of everybody, they spray you because they said you shit on yourself. Well, motherfucker, I ain't got a toilet. Where the fuck else am I supposed to ish? So not only is this inhumane, but it's really a way to break you. They, 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 they want to break you down, man. And then as long as I was out of my mind, they, they were making jokes about this. Now they were making jokes. What is he texting somebody? What Look at this pussy ass cracker. What the fuck is he doing? Just, I can't. Listen, I went to a doctor when I left that jail because for nine days when I lost my mind, it, when the doctor told me, when you lose your mind on a flight or flight basis, when your mind goes into flight mode where you realize that you're, you can't do nothing else but just like, check out, bro. I, I lost for nine days. I hallucinate. They, they say a culmination of your worst fears comes to life. Now, let me tell you something. In those nine days of illumination, uh, hallucination, I watched those CEOs rape my daughters, my girl. In your mind. My mom. My, my mom was dead, but I still watched it. It happened, bro. And when, I went to, and when I left that jail, I cried every single day for four months. Wow. I have PTSD from that jail. I was going to say, bro, you must have met it. You a mind reader too? Bro, they said that even though I didn't happen, mom, because I witnessed it like it was in real life, you still get the, the, the trauma. The trauma. And now I live with that every day. I fought for disability for four fucking years. For, for PTSD? For PTSD, man. Uh, do, is that something that they do coming from the prison system that you can file for PTSD against the state? Is that uh, something that, that's I've possible? never heard of that. I only heard of that with the military. But let me tell you something. It's real. Them COs, what they do to people in jail. Let me, you know what's, you know what's crazy? It's, it was so bad, brother, that I tell myself in my mind, have you ever you seen all the people say when they when they say I ain't going back I ain't yeah. going back yeah that gives you an insight of why the fuck they don't want to go back how bad it now is. my my mind ever since that day was so traumatizing for me I have literally instilled it in my mind that if I ever get into a co- contact with another crooked ass cop it's gonna be me or him because you're not going back because I'm not gonna be be let them do me like they did me before and I'm done. If, the, if I ever have a cop abuse me again on a badge, I'm going to show them they bleed just like me. And wow. you can you can play that for the whole fucking world because I, I don't dislike cops. Every cop that have ever approached me with respect, I give it back. It's all about respect. It's about fucking respect. You treat me like a human and I'll, give, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. 
But if you step out of line and my rap sheet proves it, I would knock your fucking teeth out. No. And I'm I, sorry. I know. No, don't being be violent. sorry. I'm I not violent. I don't even I'm know what to say, Playboy. I'm play just boy. done. I'm just done with the with cops the, being like this. That's why when I told you when they did that to Floyd and I watched them start getting their ass handed to him, I was behind. I was in my room cheering for him. Cheering but for you, who? Cheering for the people giving, giving the police their ass. They, they've been deserving this for many, 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 many of black people murder to go. Mm. Trayvon Martin, everyone, man, it's happening here right in my city. It, it just disgusts me. These cops. Trayvon disgust Martin wasn't me. killed by a cop. He was, he was killed by, by a some, neighborhood watch. Yeah, that, that wanted to be a wanna cop. Be cop yeah. A two point five. Yeah. Little wussy. Yeah, you and and he's still out and and you Lil know what's crazy? Somebody's gonna take care of him one day. Yo, and he's been terrorizing people ever since. Yeah, he brags and boasts about the shit like he's something special. Brent ain't gonna take nothing but somebody with a little bit of dedication and a real heart to take care of that fucking retard. Man, excuse my French, man. I shouldn't have said retard. That's a bad word for everybody out there that goes through. That's a bad word. Excuse <laughs> me. I apologize for for that, but that guy, God will deal with him, bro. God will deal with him. God is dealing with all of us in his own personal way. You know, there's a quite a bit of a... Just like God dealt with that dude that gave my daughter HIV on purpose and it wasn't, didn't have to be me to leave my family and my, and, my, and my other kids that didn't deserve me to leave them yet. I let go and let God deal with it. I think often we have to let go and let God, but at the same time, we have to express our oh, anger yes. with the situation. Yes, it, you know, in the way that deep down inside, man, when, when, all, when I seen the pour out for Floyd, it touched me. It was worldwide, Playboy. It touched me. It touched me like it, nothing closer to Martin Luther King touched me. And you are someone that has a Confederate flag tatted as an arm. So don't think always that when you see somebody waving a Confederate flag that they are of racist. A, a racist or because some we, people just country boys and they just got the wrong idea. But like I said, so, so what do you say? Do you think that? Do you think that there's a difference between being a country boy? Is there a difference between Southern pride and is there a difference between that Confederate flag? Do you feel that they each hold their own compartment and maybe uh, different things mean different things and different things impact others? How would you differentiate being a Southern boy, country pride, and waving that Confederate flag? How I would differentiate from that, sir, is, you know, I, like I said, I started with this as a country boy thing, and it 100%. Mud in and all that. All of my heart, mud fest, they're all flying around like, hey, hey country. All kinds you of know, guns. You know, but like I said, even then I was hood at heart, but I was just in, you know, people go through different phases of different hobbies and things to do in life. And that's what it was. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get this tattooed. All these little country boys out here think I'm the shit. Well, you know what? My difference is now I'm the type of person that I follow what's going on with my in, in, in life in this world today and the fact that so many hate hateful they're flying this shit it just i'm gonna the, what's what it's about in life is about adapting and, and, survive, o and overcoming about, oh, adapting and overcoming and me adapting and overcoming is because so many people want to use that as a symbol as racism my adapting and overcoming is going to be to cover the golf cup and let people know that i'm on your side put black lives matter over here black on, lives man. matter shit. ain't no all lives matter black lives matter that's what it's about right now go for the rest bro let me tell you something yo I, I personally i'm just thinking that would be the hottest friggin tattoo on Say earth less. it's happening you oh, know what she told Hey, hey, say listen. Less. hey, listen, listen. You know what, though? You know what she told me? Well, you know what she told me when, 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 when you dipped? She said, she said, I don't know if you about covering that up with love the way he said it. Because what about all the white people of them? Because they're going to want to hurt you. You know, because the reason I'm covering it up is to ignore ignorance of, of some of the, of the black people that are racist. Mm -hmm. would target me and all it takes it's funny you but, say that but there are black people that are racist exactly but she was worried about well what about the white motherfuckers that are racist are gonna target me as a traitor so is it better to put that on it or is it better just to cover it completely up what's your what's your opinion wow bro you put me on the spot Woo. i mean like, like i said i ain't a fear, ounce of fear in my heart so i don't really give a fuck off well but, you know in a way that would be a way of pull, I, pull, I, pulling out the the, uh, the real racist as as i say it's all about the conversation me personally but mind you i don't have to walk in your shoes my man i don't yeah. have to walk in your shoes i don't live in your neighborhood i don't have to walk that walk that you walk in yeah but for me personally who i am very much willing and able to talk about anything i would say put a black lives 
lives matter over it mm-hmm. and yeah. say, listen, yo, I'm a country boy. Yeah, you you're know? right. That would be I, a way of me saying I'm, I'm adapting to what's going I'm on in my society boy. right now. I'm hood at heart. I know the privileges that I have before me because I can walk away from, from certain situations. But at the same time, I know that there are injustices that take place within our society in yeah. which... Especially we, against the black community. Well, it, there are injustices that take place in which we have to acknowledge so if you don't like me because I am acknowledging what's real, F you. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. But that's me. Kick rocks, homie. That's me. That's me. Yeah, Listen, I, I agree with you yeah. 100%. That's me. I, I can't. I, I will never tell anybody wear my shoes. Because I wear nine and a half. You may wear a size I wear 13. I wear nine and a half. You see that? We could, we could actually walk in each other's shoes literally. We both named Jay. Hi-ya. Hey. If you wore, I don't know, you might be a wide, I might be a slim. I'm a wide. <laughs> See, well, I'm actually a wide too. I was just saying that. But, <laughs> but the thing is that I cannot tell somebody else to walk in my shoes or yeah. anything like that. You have to do what's right for you, which gets you to the next level. And sometimes you have to do what it takes to get to the next level. I'll take it, one more beer. In order to create that change yes, for sir. others. Sometimes people, what they say, fake it till you make it. Sure. Sometimes you have to do that to get to the next level yeah, to make change for others. It. But a lot of times, man. Hey, listen, I faked happiness. Being real a lot of times works for me the best, man. Real and respectful, R and R. It's the truth. I listen, I faked happiness in, in, in jobs because you know what? I knew the check was good. Yeah, so I faked yeah. happiness until you do know, what you got to do to make the money. Yeah, until that situation came, the it, it got me to the next level, which God put me. To the next level it wasn't the next person or whatever god brought me to that next level in which i was able to appreciate the blessings that was at my foot yeah and that's what it's all about yeah so yeah you know when i was in like another thing too when he was talking about the jail when he was talking about the jail thing every single cop uh, officer and no matter what unit i went to and no matter where i was in the jail every single co that was black called they never called me by my name all they called me was Pride. I mean, you got a pretty damn big on your neck. What's up? What's up, Pride? What's up, Pride? What's up, Pride? You know, they wasn't being racist about it, but they never, ever called me my name. What's up, Pride? You got that shit big as shit on your <laughs> neck, son. It's like the whole damn size of your neck. I can't even it's call. The, I can't it's even, the first hey, listen, thing hey, I saw when hey, I saw you. Hey, I'm going to let you know. Let's you in on a little secret, okay? I never told no one in this earth not even my kids this but since we you know i, I got a good vibe with you so we've been kept in it 100 honest so far but the reason i'm growing this beard there's something under there pride is under it I'm, oh i'm growing it long oh you're gonna to grow it long so that's gonna look like pe they were like no 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 it's it going pie no, no it's gonna no <laughs> no it's gonna be it's gonna oh, oh, okay it's gonna be I, I i was gonna do that just by doing the beard but another thing but the only thing is i was gonna do something to the pee where it just said ride then i mess up all the rest of the, this is biblical so i'm leaving yeah it. I'm leaving i it. say leaving you know but, but i am gonna grow the beard out that way that way it gives people the chance to talk to me and see my personality conversation before they see alive. it because nobody in this planet can get anywhere in life without opening up the negotiation table it's the truth that's it cannot stand for you will never have a solution without a negotiation point blank period you you, you have to have the conversation and, and i agree with you brother once again <laughs> i'm gonna have to say i'm glad this went good for you man thank you for being the best you that you can be you mm-hmm. had strong heavy conversation very emotional yeah, i'm glad i and, came i'm, uh, glad, I came, yo, I'm glad you came out too we as individuals in the united united states of america which means we all as humans, we all as Thanks, as dickheads, because I personally am. A, we all are dickheads. I personally am a major dickhead. I'm a I'm a super asshole. Oh, I me too. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yo, listen. I always say accept it or reject it. Mm. And <laughs> I get or love it. You, you like it or love it. Yeah. <laughs> and and I also tell people, listen. If you like it, I love it. I cannot change you. If that's what you want to be. Yo, I support you until you choose to do different. But we need to have the conversations in order to be not just the best us that we can be, but to order live with our neighbors yeah. in order to strive. President Trump, I give him that respect because he's our president. I don't <laughs> respect him as a man personally. <laughs> but no comment. Well, hey, listen. And if you do make a comment, I will respect your comment. But the thing is that I don't respect really? him as a man. Yeah, one hundred percent. Trump. Well, okay. Well, there you go. 
I don't respect him as a man because the things the, he's the, racist, man. The divisiveness that he's caused in our country is unreal. Yeah, you know, the fact that he's deporting all those fucking and separating all those Spanish, poor Spanish people, everybody, not just Spanish, they're deporting anybody, Spanish, black, anything. They're not from this country. They're separating, yeah. taking their kids. This, I mean, it made me this sick. This country is built on uh, immigrants, sick. and yet it's, that's yeah, what it you is. Do? And they work harder than most white folk across <laughs> this country. Most of the white folk across this country are lazy as a motherfucker, man. These Mexicans can uh, and, 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 and people. I'm just that, gonna say that's him saying that. I'm not saying that. I don't that, care. But. I said it. I said it because you know what? I've been in the work field for a long time, and I've watched people that come here from different countries that that literally appreciate every grain of salt that they walk on, every grain of sand that they walk on in this country, and they are humble. They'll give you the shirt off their back because they appreciate America. Being humble is and a what big it's, deal. What what it's supposed to be people that are born here a lot of the people that were born here and you know and just they do not look privileged this country the same they're privileged yeah there were therefore it equals laziness man they think privilege ah, does equal laziness you are 100 percent correct crazy i'm not lazy man i'm i'm i hey, man i fit in more more money more problems i i'm comfortable bro comfortable man, I'm comfortable so when somebody says i'm comfortable you got to be sort of sort of scared with that person yeah. Because that person says I'm comfortable. It's the way that someone says I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable, bro. You, you gotta be. And that person could do some harm to you if you mess around with them in the wrong way. <laughs> I'm serious. And me just being from Brooklyn, when somebody says yo I'm comfortable, I'm walking away. Because that person will adjust to whatever situation they land in. But at the same time, be careful because you don't want to be the person that land them there. On the wrong side. <laughs> the right side, man. I'm a person like me with a huge heart and as humble as I am, you're in a, you're in good you're, 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 you're in good hands. You're, good you're like all state. Let me find out. You want insurance policy? <laughs> What's in your wallet? <laughs> <laughs> on that note. Nothing. <laughs> on that note. Every time that commercial come on, what's in your wallet? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> on that note, brother, I'm going to say thank you once again Yo, for you're being welcome. the best thank you, you very much for giving me that, that you can be expressing your heart, your emotions, your true inner you. People see what's on the surface, but you showed a whole other thing. Yeah. And I appreciate you for that. We need to have the conversation, yeah. not just in America, but across the world, because we are all humans. For every person that's alive, yeah, I, I there's a level of respect. You. I appreciate you talking to me and giving me the opportunity, man, to express myself. I really, really do that. I got people looking out for this interview before. Really? It's even, yes, sir. Yeah, I that's said, cool. I said, I'm talking to this dude. He had a bunch of tattoos that was suspect, but we're going to see what he about. But as I say, I don't back down. There's no man that I'm afraid of because as yeah. you said and I say it, we both bleed. Yeah, I just wish that everybody could see me for what I really am. But it, the fact that I live my life like a hermit and I really am, I don't trust nobody and I'm, I'm just scared to really uh, express myself. So it would be in you random and coming up to me like that. I think that opened the door for honesty. Well, it's an opportunity. As I say, these are all relationships in which this was a relationship, though be it short, it was a relationship. And we can have other interviews yeah. in which you yeah, see. Yeah, we, we're going to have another one that's going to be on camera. It's going to show after I'm done with renovation. <laughs> so I'm going to show you that I'm going to take Yo, your word I, for it. Hey, listen, there's a great episode. Some of other people want to call me traitors, bring it on. Yo, do you, do you watch South Park? Yeah, yeah. Yo, they have an episode <laughs> called um, White People Renovating Houses. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> Waving a Confederate flag. <laughs> But, oh, <laughs> but yes, and we, I, I would do that, and I was telling my man, he was like, "This, I get it," I and I was like, "Yo, it. I should put that in this." But you know it what, my sure. man, it sure, bro. we we could do it, brother. We could do it, yo. You gonna hurt my feelings? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen, it's it's great when you can have tough conversation and be laughing yeah, yeah, at the end sure. of it. At the end for of it. Sure. It's, we all have good hearts. Even though they may be in different directions, we have to find a level playing field. Yeah, I got a bigger one than most, man. I feel like you do too, man. I hope we have a long, fruitful friendship. Bro, I appreciate you. Stay yeah, blessed. I appreciate you too. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you, man. Yeah, you too.